The pinnacle of a stunning career, the fulfilment of a sporting destiny. When Andy Murray was crowned the first men's British winner of Wimbledon in 77 years, it was the culmination of a life of dedication to tennis. I just enjoy all of it. I like practicing and playing matches. Doesn't really bother me what I do, just as long as I'm playing. Murray was earmarked from an early age as a player of prodigious potential, even if it wasn't immediately obvious to his mum. I have two sons, and I have to say that when I started them both off when they were sort of three and four, Andrew was absolutely awful. A talented all-round sportsman, teenage Murray turned down the chance to pursue football and instead enrolled at the Sanchez Casal Academy in Barcelona to further his tennis dream. Two years later, he won the Junior US Open. A year on, Murray turned professional and began to climb that ladder. By 2006, he was British number one, and within 12 months, he broke into the top 10 of the world rankings. Murray earned his first Grand Slam final appearance in 2008, losing in straight sets to Roger Federer. Belief was growing that he could be the one to finally capture a men's Wimbledon title, even if the crowds at SW19 were taking their time to warm to him. It's because he just doesn't smile very much. He's got that moody look about him all the time. But plenty of other tennis fans were singing his praises. Come on, Andy, Andy Murray. Despite Wimbledon heartbreak again at the hands of Federer, 2012 proved to be his breakthrough year at the very top of the sport. Murray returned to centre court and won Olympic gold before claiming his first Grand Slam title in New York. The boy from Dunblane was now ready to take his place in history. You know, Wimbledon is the pinnacle of, of our sport, of, of, of tennis, so to win it, you know, is, is, is a great achievement. Murray was now in the heart of a golden era for men's tennis, competing with and defeating the golden trio of Federer, Djokovic and Nadal. The Scots star was granted the freedom of Sterling, and he showed that global stardom would never dim his love for his home. I think everyone knows that I'm extremely proud of, uh, of where I come from. In his quest for further greatness, he raised eyebrows by hiring Amelie Moresmo, making her the first woman in history to coach an elite men's player. And there was much he still craved to achieve. Winning the Davis Cup with Great Britain in 2015 was his next big on-court milestone. Off the court, he married his long-term girlfriend, Kim Sears, in Dunblane in the same year. Months later, he won Wimbledon again and added a second consecutive Olympic gold medal. He finally became the world number one player in late 2016. But injuries had long cast a shadow over his game. Surgery on his back and hip took its toll on Murray's body. At the 2019 Australian Open, it looked like he had reached the end of the road. You know, I can't keep doing this. And the, I needed to have, like, an end point. But the man who thrilled fans with his never-say-die attitude refused to yield to his failing body. A procedure to resurface his hip with metal caps was a success and he declared himself ready to resume his glittering career. The surgery bought Murray another five years on the court, but he would never again threaten to win another major title. 2024 was assumed to be his swan song year, even before ruptured ankle ligaments put his Wimbledon appearance in doubt. But Murray did take an emotional final bow at Wimbledon before confirming that the Paris Olympic Games would be his last time competing on the world stage. He departs tennis entwined in the history of the sport, one of the big four in the greatest era for the men's game. Three Grand Slams, twice Olympic champion, among his 49 career titles, and his legacy will be felt for decades to come. Jamie Borthwick, STV Sport.